As a result of fluoridation, our children will be healthier and happier. There is no health hazard that justifies postponing water fluoridation. Fluoride is safe and effective, and it's one of the most inexpensive ways to really cut down on dental decay. So there's two ways you can typically get fluoride then. One, a supplement that you take systemically, which gets into the body, and you can get into the teeth as they're growing and maturing to make them nice and strong and resistant to decay. And the other way is to bathe those teeth with fluoride by the water you're drinking. Or by the Fluoride is a toxic industrial waste product from the phosphate fertilizer industry that's added to most municipal water supplies in the United States. Unfortunately, fluoride kills most of our beneficial enzymes, attacks the hypothalamus gland in the brain, inhibits proper functioning of the thyroid gland, can cause weakening of the bones, and can cause dental fluorosis in children, which is an irreversible mineralization disorder of the teeth. Sodium fluoride is also a central nervous system toxin that can diminish IQ, even in small doses. All right, you will know here where the uh, fluorine has just been introduced that there is a distinct stimulation of all the cells as they react to the poison. This we take to be a defense mechanism. Then big things begin to slow up and reproduction is definitely inhibited. We consume it every day with the reassurance from our health authorities that it is doing us good. The truth is fluoride is a poison and adding it to our drinking water is an evolving social experiment started 40 years ago. Now one of the world's top fluoride experts has issued a grim warning about what it could be doing to our health and that of unborn children. You're not dealing with a benign substance. There's much too much risk of far too little benefit. Fluoride <coughs> is safe. They decided far too early before the science was properly in that fluoridation was a good thing. The dental community has no idea of the toxicology behind fluoride. Fluoride does not just affect the teeth. Fluoride is a neurotoxin. This is being drank by so many people throughout the U.S. every day. But who's responsible? Who's the doctor making sure we're not getting too much? The weight of evidence actually is more in the favor of fluoride doing damage than against. This is against all principles of modern, modern pharmacology. It's really obsolete. A growing body of science indicates that fluoridation is neither safe nor effective over 2,000 health, scientific, medical, dental and environmental professionals are calling for an end to fluoridation worldwide. Could fluoridated water cause cancer? We may have a problem with fluoridation in drinking water. New research shows the link is there, but the Harvard professor in charge of the research is downplaying that link between fluoride and cancer. Is it because he also works for Colgate? A quarter milligram of fluoride. Well, that's the same amount of fluoride is what we find in eight ounces of water. Quarter milligram of fluoride, quarter milligram of fluoride. Don't swallow. If you do, call the Poison Control Center. We have been fluoridating our water in Tennessee for more than 50 years, but never before has there been more talk than that fluoridating our water might be a bad idea and a health risk. This is a way of delivering a medicine. Fluoride is a drug, is a medicine. Fluoride is being put in specifically to alter you physically to make a physical change in you. This is not chlorine. This is not any number of the other uh, chemicals that are used to treat the water, make the water safe and drinkable. It's not like chlorine used to make the water supply safe and kill the bugs in the, in the, in the water supply. This is the only thing anywhere in the world that gets added to the municipal drinking waters to actually treat the human, to treat the body. There is absolutely no drug on the market that's given in a one dose fits all situation. It's absolutely obsolete. It's uh, in modern pharmacology it's so clear that even if you have a fixed dose of a, of a drug the in individuals respond very differently 
to one and the same dose. Now in this case you have it in the water and people are drinking different amounts of water so you have huge variations in the consumption. That fluoridation is medication added to water without your permission and that's wrong. But most of all because the National Research Council believes young children are getting three to four times the dose of fluoride as adults. And now the American Dental Association is telling mothers not to make baby formula with fluoridated water because of fear of dental fluorosis. The problem with adding medicine, medicine to water is an obvious one of consent, that people can't give their informed consent, which is a basic of medical ethics. We are allowing communities to do to everybody in the community what an individual doctor cannot do to an individual patient, and that is prescribe medication uh, regardless of the informed consent of the patient. What physician that you know in his right mind would treat somebody whose medical history he doesn't know, who he's never met, with a substance that meant to do change in their bodies, and just with the advice, have as much or as little of it as you like, but you'll take it for a lifetime because it's meant to help somebody else's teeth. Scientists like Nobel Prize winner Arvid Carlson and a large group of EPA scientists have called for the banning of fluoride because we don't know how much we're ingesting, so we don't know if we're being poisoned. Look, just if people want fluoride, let them use fluoridated toothpaste and spit it out. But don't go poisoning everyone. Don't be. Don't continue this after everyone knows all this information now, just because it's not convenient. It's fluoride. It is in tea. It's in coffee. It's in water. It's in bread. It's in toothpaste. But it's actually a poison, right? Here we have another a demonstration of uh, the uh, destruction of cells by a perfusion of one part in 30 million. Notice the swelling of the mitochondria in the body of the cells. Notice the compaction of the uh, material in the center or vital spot which we call the nucleus of the cells. That too is evidence of injury. There's no reason for people be exposing themselves, all their internal organs, to fluoride when if it works you can you can do something topically. If you want to prevent sunburn you don't drink suntan lotion you put it on your skin and so if you want to uh, have the benefits of fluoride in oral health what you do is put it on the surface of the tooth and, and not not drink it. The quality of evidence for topical fluoride is in a different league from the evidence on water fluoridation. I mean, absolutely no question about that. Adding fluoride to toothpaste, you are going to ingest some of it, um, and that needs to be taken seriously. Um, but it's not made to be ingested, and it's made to be rubbed onto the surface of the tooth, which is where you're supposed to have it. It's a much smarter way to go about using fluoride in dentistry. It's widely accepted that the topical application of fluoride to the surface of teeth is beneficial. Uh, I have no dispute with that. However, I can see absolutely no justification for asking the whole population to take it systemically, to swallow it, internalize it. One of the things that concerns me is water fluoridation for infants. The American Dental Association and Center for Disease Control recommend that infants not receive water for drinking nor for making their formula. It's 250 times more concentrated in fluoride than mother's milk. We shouldn't fluoridate water and harm are most vulnerable. The only thing that causes dental fluorosis is fluoride. Too much fluoride ingested usually during the developing years, birth to about eight years of age. About one third of children are now experiencing fluorosis according to the CDC. One of the things that the uh, proponents are very careful to stay away from is to mention how many people don't fluoridate. Most of the Western world does not fluoridate their water. Um, we are definitely in the minority in the fact that we push water fluoridation. Many of the countries in the world, the developed countries, no longer fluoridate, never did fluoridate. Most European countries do not fluoridate. Austria, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, Germany, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Italy, Greece, Portugal. The overwhelming number of countries in the world do not fluoridate and guess what? Their teeth are just as good if not better than ours. Comparing different countries of the world we can see that no matter what we do on fluoridation whether the country fluoridates or no fluoride at all 
decays reduced the same amount in all countries. We can compare states in the United States. We can see on a graph that as they're plotted in order of increased amount of fluoridation in the state, fluoridation doesn't make any difference. We have the same amount of good health in the states regardless of their fluoridation. There are now 30 animal studies which indicate that fluoride could damage the brain. And this comes on top of a number of studies from China which indicates that fluoride lowers IQ in children. I mean, there's lots of epidemiological evidence now that, for example, it might affect the intelligence of the child coming out of China, and that's been reviewed by the National Academy of Sciences. They say that you can't be absolutely certain about it, but there's quite a strong indication, and we need further research. In my view, a fluoride today, as far as intelligence and the brain is concerned, is where lead was in the early 70s. In the early 70s, scientists knew that high levels of lead could cause brain damage in children and other health effects, but they felt that subclinical levels of lead were okay. I think the same thing is happening now with fluoride, that it's only a function of getting more and more sensitive tests to show that even lower levels of fluoride can cause lowering of IQ and other subtle effects. You know, while these bits of further research are going on to elucidate what the absolute truth is, we should be taking a more precautionary stance and saying, okay, for the time being, we don't, we don't fluoridate. Note the swelling of the membranes around the cells. This makes it impossible for them to absorb foodstuff. Note they're shriveling up now. There are no cells dividing. All is becoming still. The concern about fluoride and the effect on the thyroid is multifold. Fluoride was used to suppress hyperactive thyroid, uh, especially in Europe back in the 40s and 50s. Uh, and the doses that were used to suppress thyroid activity are now uh, in the range that people are getting in the, in the U.S. from this vast overexposure to fluoride. The effects of hypothyroidism, even probably borderline hypothyroidism, are things like depression, lethargy, when a person just doesn't feel like getting up and doing anything. We have several studies, as a matter of fact, in the United States that have shown that uh, uh, fluoride can increase uh, bone fracture rates. The peer-reviewed studies in, in prestigious journals such as the Journal of the American Medical Association that showing increased risk of bone fracture based on the amount of fluoride that a person consumes. It's well known in the endemic fluorosis areas that the first sign of skeletal fluorosis is aching joints. The early stages of skeletal fluorosis are associated with bone and joint pain. Fluoride causes symptoms identical to arthritis. You cannot uh, distinguish the fluorosis or early fluoride poisoning from rheumatoid or osteoarthritis. It's very much the same. If you ask most dentists and ask them what they're putting in the water, most dentists would say sodium fluoride, pharmaceutical sodium fluoride, the same stuff that is in toothpaste. They have absolutely no idea that it's in nine out of ten cases hydrofluorosilicic acid and that hydrofluorosilicic acid is a waste product for the phosphate industry. This has come about because for maybe a hundred years the phosphate fertilizer industry put out two very very poisonous gases into the environment hydrogen fluoride and silicon tetrafluoride eventually they were required to capture those and they did it with a wet spray water and that water converts these two very toxic gases into hexafluorosilicic acid and it's this scrubbing liquor which is about 25 percent strong is put into tanker trucks driven around the country and added to our drinking water most of the cells are dead or dying this demonstrates the toxicity of this material Although we're told that fluoride is added to our water supply to prevent cavities, numerous large-scale studies have shown no difference in tooth decay between fluoridated and non-fluoridated communities. 
If you'd like to keep this poison out of your body and your children's bodies, install a high-quality water filter in your home.